just got to finish off this path. And almost done. Ah, oh, darn, I am. I'm out of gravel again. Yep. No matter, I'll just do some building instead. Got this lovely birch trim along the bottom. And then I'm doing sandstone walls. I think it looks really good. Very nice. Although, I'm out of sandstone now as well. I'm going to have to go all the way to the desert now to get more. What a pain. If only there was some way of getting renewable gravel and sand. But hang on. What even is sand? What even is gravel? This calls for a geologist. Nice. Take it away. Thanks, Amos. I can definitely answer those questions. Most of us probably think of sand as the tan or white material that makes up many beaches. But the term sand really only refers to the size of the particles. They can actually be made up of many different materials. This one is little grains of quartz. This green sand is from Hawaii, and the grains are crystals of olivine. And this one comes from the Caribbean. It's mostly broken up shell material. To be considered sand, the particles have to be between 2 millimeters and an eighth of a millimeter, or 62 and a half microns. Besides sand, we have several blocks that are just names of sizes of rocks. Cobble is between 256 and 64 millimeters. Gravel is between 64 and 2 millimeters. Clay is between 3.9 and 0.98 microns. And this point here in the middle we don't have a block for, but I'm going to use light gray concrete for now. And it is the size of silt. It's between sand and clay. It's between 62.5 and 3.9 microns. And just for completeness, there are things on either end of this too. There are boulders that are bigger than cobbles, and there are colloidals that are smaller than clay. And while we don't have a block named silt, we do have a block with a lot of silt in it. Dirt, or more aptly, soil, is a mixture of water, air, and solids. The solid parts that are making it up are usually rocks, minerals, and some organic matter. In real life, soil is incredibly varied, and there are 12 major classifications of soil, and each of those having several subclasses. We actually have one of those classes in Minecraft, Podsol. Podsol is a real soil. It's probably going to be a topic that I make a video on in the future, but I would love for Minecraft to add some different soil types that are all based on different biomes. Podsol is normally found in boreal areas, and Minecraft dirt could be considered what's called an alpha sol, and that's commonly produced in real life plain biomes. In real life, one of the ways we can analyze soils is by looking at the particle sizes that make it up. There are a few ways to do this, but a simple way to measure these values is by passing dried soils through a series of sieves like this. We weigh all the soil before, and then we measure each part of the soil that can't pass through the next sieve. Let's add some percents on our graph here. If we look at the grain sizes present in a block of dirt, you'll see that it's mostly silt. Obviously, this varies with the type of dirt you're talking about, but if we looked at something like Podsol, it would have a little bit more sand and a little bit less of the others. And if we looked at something like coarse dirt, maybe it would have a little bit of gravel in it. Geologists really love ternary diagrams for some reason. We normally use what's called a soil texture diagram, and you can plot the percentages of the values, and then where your intersection at determines what type of soil you have. Who is she? In nature, sediment progresses from large particles to small particles through the process of weathering. These weathering processes can be broadly grouped into three types. Physical weathering is driven by wind, water, ice, heat, and gravity, breaking down materials into smaller pieces. This is a vent effect. It's from Antarctica, and it's a piece of basalt that was polished by snow crystals blowing across it. Chemical weathering is done by dissolving or altering the minerals that are making up the materials. This rock is light colored on the outside, but if I break it, it has a dark interior, and that's the real color of the rock. The exterior is chemically weathering and changing. And then there is also biological weathering, which really is just chemical or physical weathering done by some sort of organism. When these organisms die, they add that organic material back to the sediment, and that is what starts building up soils. To get back to sediment size, it's not too much of a stretch to use Minecraft dirt in place of silt. Back to you, Amos. Thanks, Nice. What a nice guy. Please go check out his channel after this if you are curious about Minecraft, geology, and a surprising amount about color theory too. So, what have we learned? 
The major difference between cobble, gravel, sand, dirt, and clay is the particle sizes present, and weathering processes transform large particles down into smaller ones. We already have a few of these processes in Minecraft. Namely, we have biological weathering for turning stone into dirt using moss, and we have a form of water-based weathering from dirt to clay when it's saturated into mud. So what about if we add some more? The first process I want to add to the game is a way of turning cobblestone into gravel. Think of this as the first step down the particle size ladder. For this process, I think freeze thaw weathering is the perfect way to go, as freeze thaw is most associated with breaking apart rocks. For this mechanic, whenever a block of water freezes next to a cobblestone block, the cobblestone should be weathered into a new block called moraine. Moraine is the word for the debris produced by glacial erosion. While it can contain a whole range of different particle sizes, it is well known for containing large, rounded cobbles and gravel. In Minecraft, I imagine this block having the same properties as gravel, in that it will fall if unsupported, but it would also have the slipperiness of ice. Not necessarily something that useful, but certainly a unique block. This is just a mock-up of what the texture could look like. When this moraine block melts, under the same conditions as normal ice, it would melt into gravel. And so, using a freeze-thaw weathering cycle, we have turned cobblestone into gravel. From a game balance point of view, I'm not sure if Frostwalker boots should or shouldn't work to produce moraine, as it may make automation too easy using an armor stand. Potentially, it could be balanced by having the boots lose more durability during the process. The next erosion process I'm proposing to add is wind erosion from gravel to sand. Wind erosion is a process by which wind blowing over rocks and soil blast the material and particles against each other, causing them to break down, in a process known as attrition. Wind erosion is particularly well known in deserts, where wind not only produces the iconic shape of the sand dunes, but in many cases the very material those dunes are made of. For the implementation of this in Minecraft, it is the perfect time to take advantage of the new mob, the breeze, and the wind charges it uses. I propose, when a gravel block is hit by a wind charge, either thrown by a player, a dispenser, or a breeze, the gravel block will be weathered into sand. Potentially to help balance it in-game, it may have some percentage chance of weathering the block. Nice and simple mechanic for this one, but it's a fun challenge to automate as part of a larger farm. Finally, the weathering process to turn sand into dirt. For this mechanic, the key element is that, as Nice explained, dirt also includes a large component of organic material. For that reason, I think the appropriate weathering process is chemical weathering. Chemical weathering is the process by which acids break down a soil or rock. It is particularly impactful on some high pH limestones and chalk. The most common acid for chemical erosion is carbonic acid, which is formed when carbon dioxide dissolves in water. It can also occur due to acid rain, which can either be sulfuric or nitric acid. The first step for chemical erosion to take place is for the sand to be saturated with water, because acids require water to dissolve in. In the same way that you can right-click on a dirt block with a bottle of water to saturate it into mud, I propose that you can do the same to sand to turn it into quicksand. Quicksand acts almost exactly like powder snow. Mobs or the player slowly sink into it, and if their head gets covered by the quicksand, they start to take suffocation damage, like when someone's inside a block. This could make a fun new hazard to be added to desert world generation, or another option for killing mobs in a mob farm. Like powder snow, it would require a bucket to pick up, but it would fall if unsupported like sand does. Again, the texture here is just a mock-up. To produce both the acid and organic material required for the chemical weathering process, I propose using the composter. Decomposition of plants would both produce the organic matter required for the dirt, and produce carbonic acid. I propose if you place a pointed dripstone underneath a full composter, the acidic organic material will begin to drip out the bottom. This would slowly poison mobs which stand below, and if there is a quicksand block below it, it will eventually turn it into dirt, using up the composter's contents in the process. 
This one is a little bit more complicated, but I really like the functionality of the quicksand block, as well as the poisoning effect from the dripping acid, and I think that automating this process will be a fun challenge for technical players. In combination with the other weathering processes, this will make a fun, albeit slow, alternative for making renewable dirt. And with that in mind, we have added three more weathering processes to the game. Freeze thaw weathering to turn cobblestone into gravel, wind weathering to turn gravel into sand, and chemical weathering to turn sand into dirt. And we get cool new moraine and quicksand blocks for free. In theory, you could set up a sequence of automated machines to generate cobblestone and turn it through all the intermediary blocks all the way down into clay, although it would be somewhat inefficient as a clay farm. I really feel like these mechanics would fit well into the vanilla game, as they are building off existing mechanics while adding new, unique options for automation, traps, and building materials. I also think it adds to the educational aspect of Minecraft by teaching a little bit more about geology and geological processes, which I think is really cool. Let me know if you have any feedback in the comment section below, and if you like the idea, please share it with Mojang. And as I said earlier, please go check out Nice's YouTube channel if this kind of content is interesting to you. Thanks so much to Nice for helping out with the video and consulting on the ideas. Thanks so much for watching.